Hey guys, today I will be starting a new what if scenario, that being what if Goku landed in Ayat. With the what if explained let's begin. Realizing Frieza is probably preparing to destroy planet Vegeta, Bardock and Jinae decide to send their baby son Kakarot to a distant planet with low power levels to save him from their planet's destruction, deciding to send him to Earth. Before sending him off, Bardock and Jin tell their son to survive no matter what, he must survive, as his ship starts its long trip to Earth. However, while it was drifting through space, it went through a plot hole, I mean a wormhole, transporting him to the Aeot universe, crashing down somewhere in War Maria next to Grisha in the year 835 a few weeks after Eren was born. Seeing the crater, Grisha decides to check it out, seeing a spherical metal object, with a baby crawling out of it. He then hears a voice saying wake up, you must destroy all life, as a holographic moon is projected into the sky. Suddenly the baby started to contort and rapidly grow in size and gain hair, transforming into a great ape, shooting beams in every direction, causing random destruction. Seeing this, Grisha uses his scalpel to cut his hand, transforming into his attack titan, fighting Goku's great ape. Due to Goku being mindless in his great ape form and not as strong as Grisha's titan, Grisha wins, evading Goku's attacks until he manages to crush the space pod, removing the holographic moon, making revert to his base form. Seeing the damage it caused, Grisha considered killing the child, fearing it was sent from Molly, but decides against it as he is a doctor who saves life, he could never kill a child, deciding to adopt the child calling him Goku for plot reasons. When they got home, Kala questioned why he had a baby with him, with Grisha explaining that he found him in the fields all alone, theorizing that he was probably abandoned by his family for having a tail, grabbing it, which made the child freeze up and stop crying, deducing that it is some sort of weak spot for him. Quite quickly, Goku was accepted into the family by Kala, and since they don't know his birthday, they make the day they found him, Goku's birthday, making him Eren's younger brother. Grisha also realized that even though he is just a baby, Goku already has the same strength as the average grown man, and also loved to fight, and he also loved to eat, requiring a lot more food than your average child. In the year 844, Goku and Eren tagged along with Grisha to a regular checkup to the Ackerman house, but Goku got hungry on the way, deciding to fight some wild animals in the woods, killing and eating five wolves. Meanwhile, Grisha and Eren had arrived at the Ackerman house finding the cold lifeless remains of Mr. and Mrs. Ackerman, realizing the daughter isn't there so either escaped or was kidnapped. Seeing this Grisha tells Eren to wait at the foot of the mountain, but like normal, Eren disobeys his orders confronting the kidnappers, killing them. After a while, the military police along with Grisha and Goku arrive, seeing the dead corpses so Eren is scolded like usual, and they take Mikasa in. When they get home, Kala jokes that with the amount of children you keep bringing home, we will have an orphanage soon. While growing up, Goku was bullied for being different, having a tail, but Goku wouldn't really mind, and would always get in a fight with them, however he would always win, scaring the life out of anyone who bullied him with his immense strength, which is by now a power level of 10, and am going to make pure titans a power level of 100, so Goku is already a tenth the strength of a titan, and can run, at half the speed of a sprinting horse being capable of running at speeds of up to 13 meters per second. Goku would often spar with Eren and Mikasa, making them a little stronger as well, more so Eren than Mikasa as she is already a beast. One day Eren, Goku and Amin are talking about joining the scouts, with Eren going on about taking back his freedom, and Amin talking about all the undiscovered beauty of the outside world, which confuses Goku as he doesn't really care about freedom, or the outside world, simply asking Amin if there is a lot of food and strong people to fight beyond the walls, so Eren and Amin tell him that the titans are probably pretty strong, and if all the titans are killed, they will have so much more land, enough to grow as many crops as they want and raise as many cattle as they want as well. Hearing this, Goku gets motivated declaring that he is going to become a scout and fight as many strong titans as he can and eat all the food he can find, running off to train. However, all fun comes to an end as on that day a few minutes later, the colossal titan appears kicking down the gate off Wall Maria, allowing the titans to enter and cause carnage. Realizing the titans are entering from the same direction their house and mother was, Mikasa, Eren, and Goku run home, to find a giant boulder on the remains of their house, trapping their mother. Seeing this, they try to lift the beam, trapping her down, but together they can barely lift it, enough for her to escape but she explains that her legs are crushed so she can't escape, so they have to run. Hearing this Goku gets a slight rage boost doubling his strength, now able to lift the beam by himself, ordering Eren and Mikasa to pull Kala out, but like she said, her legs are crushed, and it's very painful for her to move so they are tortured by her screams as they try to pull her out. Eventually Harness arrives prepared to fight the titan incoming threatening them, but he gets scared, instead grabbing Mikasa, Eren, and Goku, starting to run away, as they scream for him to stop and for the titan to put their mother down, as they hear Kala yell for them to survive, as at that moment, she gets eaten alive. Hearing these words again, Goku remembers two people that looked like him telling him the exact same words, remembering this Goku uses his anger and emotions to manifest the power of the great ape in his base form, transforming into a cry, as his hair spikes up and his eyes turn a primal yellow and his power multiplies tenfold. Controlled by primal instinct and emotion, Goku leaps into the air 50 feet high, punching the titan in the face 20 times within a single second, sending half of it flying meters into the distance, grabbing its arm, throwing its body to the ground, constantly kicking and punching it, until he ran out of energy, and due to the immense strain on the body, he collapsed to the ground nearly unconscious. 
When he woke up, he asks where they are, with Amin explaining that they are at an old storehouse for dry food, which they are now using to store the evacuees from Wall Maria. Hearing the word food, Goku's belly rumbles, as Goku asks if there is any food because for some reason, he is unnaturally hungry, however all he received was a single loaf of bread, so Goku started challenging people to fights, where the winner got the loser's portion of food, managing to get 10 loaves before people stopped accepting. When Goku had filled his stomach a bit, he states that now that he has fought a titan, he can't wait to fight even stronger ones, running off to train. At the same time, Armin asks Mikasa and Eren what Goku meant by having fought a titan, with Mikasa and Eren explaining that Goku got really angry and allowed emotions and instincts control him as his hair spiked up and eyes went yellow and he became a strong no stronger than a titan, he was even faster than it, beating it down within seconds, however it seems that it was very tearing as he fell to the ground unconscious straight after. Eren then starts rambling on about killing all the titans like usual. In the year 847, Eren, Armin, Mikasa, and Goku join the 104th Cadet Corps. While eating the group from Shigan China are questioned about the Titans, with Eren explaining his dream to kill all the Titans, and Goku stating that he just wants to join the scouts so he can fight more strong Titans and eat as much food as he can find. They question Goku on what he means by fight more Titans, with Goku explaining that he fought a Titan after it killed their mother, punching its head off, but he doesn't really remember it clearly as he was flooded with rage and hatred at that time, and fell unconscious straight after. But none of them believe him telling him it was probably just a dream. They also question Goku on his tail, but Goku simply states that he was born with it apparently and that he was also told never to look at the full moon because of it, but he doesn't know why. When training begins, Goku easily learns how to use ODM, is proficient in hand-to-hand -hand combat, quickly learning all of Annie's techniques, showing her a few of his own, is super fast, now being slightly fainter than a sprinting horse, and quarter the strength of an average titan. Seeing this, the class is shocked as they thought Goku was lying when he said he fought a titan, but now they kind of believe it, also Annie, Reina, and Berthold start to see Goku as a threat to their plan. However, despite how impressive Goku's physical prowess is, everyone quickly realizes that academically Goku is very lackluster, only being able to remember something if it involves fighting. During the lesson where they learn the weak spot of a titan, when told they have to cut the nape of the titan, Goku stands up saying does that mean the titan that ate their mother is still alive, as his hair spikes up and his eyes go yellow for a few seconds, and he crushes the desk, sending cracks all across the room. However as quickly as the power appears it disappears as Goku reverts back to base tired and hungry. Now knowing the titan that killed his mother is still out there, Goku is motivated to train twice as hard, rapidly increasing his strength and speed. In the year 850, the 104th Cadet Corp graduate, with Goku being the number one person in the top 10 therefore pushing everyone's ranking down by one. Despite being the number one cadet, Goku still decides to join the scouts, and when questioned, Goku explains that if he goes to the military police, he might get a lot of food, but if he joins the scouts, he can fight tons of titans and have lots of fun freeing as much land as they need for farming and agriculture which persuades Sasha to also join the scouts as she was thinking the same thing and would probably have a pretty close bond with Goku through their inhuman love food. While servicing the cannons, the colossal titan suddenly appeared, kicking a hole in the wall, emitting a strong burst of steam pushing everyone of the wall except Goku. Seeing this as their chance to take down the colossal titan Eren charges towards it blades drawn, and wanting to have a fight, Goku also charges towards the colossal titan, dodging its swinging arm, however they were not the true target, the target was the cannons. However, because of the colossal lack of speed, Goku and Eren closed the distance, running up its arm, preparing to strike it down. So the colossal titan emits a max power steam burst to push them back sending Eren flying away, slightly burning him, however Goku was still resisting, and uses all his might to punch the colossal titan in the head, making a hole in it. When suddenly it just disappears into thin air. At the same time, the others scale the wall again, asking if Goku took it down, however they are shocked to see Goku standing there with his clothes and hair on fire, unaware of the fact. Realizing Goku hadn't noticed, they shout at him informing him that he is on fire, as Goku finally starts to feel it, running around in circles, trying to find water, eventually putting it out. When the fire is put out, they check Goku's injuries to see how severe they are, however to their shock Goku only had minor burns, in fact Eren had worse burns and he was only in the steam for a second. After the panic calms down, they are all given orders and Mikasa and Goku are placed in the elite squad, with Goku jumping around killing tons of titans, now being 75% the strength of a pure titan, and multiple times faster than one, easily being able to dodge their attacks and counter, punching them in the nape killing them. At first the elites thought Goku was crazy because he didn't wait to put on ODM gear or collect his blades, but they soon realize Goku's strength as he mows through titans like they were nothing, even having fun as he does so. However, he is eventually overwhelmed, receiving multiple blows, bruising him, but at that moment, Goku still stood up, concentrating his energy in his hands and shot a beam of energy killing the titans surrounding him, draining him of energy, forcing him to retreat to collect his blades and ODM gear. At the same time, Eren still transforms into his attack titan for the first time, killing his fair share of titans. Once everyone had evacuated, Goku and Mikasa decide to fall back to Eren and Amin's location, however they are shocked to hear that Goku had died, which puts Goku into a blind rage, transforming into a cry as his hair spikes up, and eyes turn yellow once again, making Goku go on a blind rampage slaughtering every titan he sees, clearing a path to HQ for the others to refuel their gas. Mikasa also joins in, 
doing her stupid suicide charge, running out of gas, falling to the ground next to a titan. Seeing this, Goku calms down slightly, controlling his body to go to Mikasa, but when he arrives, he runs out of energy, collapsing unconscious next to Mikasa. The titan that was incoming, tries to punch the two, however Mikasa dodges, pulling Goku's body with her, however the titan was able to graze Goku's leg, fracturing it. Thinking it was the end, Mikasa prepared to give up as two titans had surrounded them, however she realized if they both die, all those memories of Eren will die with them, deciding to fight. However suddenly, one of the titans stepped over them punching the other one in the head sending it flying, it then started stomping on the nape of the titan killing it. Before Mikasa could realize what had happened, Armin and Connie arrive, swooping down, picking up Goku and Mikasa. Armin still comes up with the same tactic to clear HQ, by luring the strange titan killing titan towards HQ, however this time, they have gas to spare as Goku has a nearly full supply due to mostly relying on his legs to move and evade attacks. The rest of the Battle of Trist goes the same as usual. Both Eren and Goku wake up at Eren's court martial, surrounded by guns, blades and cannons aimed at them. Goku and Eren ask Mikasa and Armin what's going on but the captain of the garrison regiment demands to know if Eren is titan or human, which confuses Eren and Goku as they don't know anything about it. They ask what he means, so he explains that multiple people witnessed Eren emerge from a titan's body, which shocks Eren as he thought it was just a dream. The soldiers then prepare to kill Eren, but Goku and Mikasa stand up, blades drawn, with Mikasa telling them that they won't, not while she is standing, unless they want her to demonstrate her own technique on you and every last inch of your traitorous flesh. Goku then says, I don't know anything about this titan thing, but if that makes Eren stronger, I can't just let you kill him without having a good fight with him. Stating that he may be tired, but he still has enough strength and energy to take all of them down, taking a step forward. Hearing the threat, squad leader Ian Doriai informs the captain that both Goku and Mikasa were assigned to the elites straight out of training, with Mikasa being easily equal to 100 soldiers and Goku being equal to probably 1000 soldiers, being nearly as strong as a titan, being capable of killing them with his bare hands, killing at least 100 titans before being overwhelmed and being capable of outmaneuvering a titan without ODMB or even being able to outrun them with somewhat ease. Hearing this, the captain is scared and once again asks Eren if he is human or titan. To which Eren states that he is human, knowing this, the captain is left with no choice, raising his arm to signal for a cannon shot. Seeing this Goku prepares to punch the cannonball when it is shot, while Mikasa grabs Eren preparing to escape over the walls, but Eren remembers what his father said to him, and resists against Mikasa pulling them to Amin and Goku, grabbing them, biting his hand, semi-transforming into a titan, blocking the cannonball with his hand, shocking and scaring the garrison soldiers outside. Eren comes up with a plan for Amin to persuade them to let Eren live and use his titan abilities under military command, but the captain is too hysterical and refuses to listen to logic, preparing to signal for another cannon fire, when Commander Dot Pixis arrives stopping him. Eren, Goku, Armin and Mikasa then go for a walk with Pixis, discussing their options to reseal trust, with Goku saying he could probably move that boulder to the gate if his legs weren't severely bruised and fractured, so Amin suggests that they use Eren's titan abilities to move it. After a while, they decide on a plan, so Pixis explains the plan to the other soldiers, that being for Eren to use his titan powers to pick up the boulder and use it to plug up the hole in the wall, while everyone else acts as a distraction to lure titans away from Eren. Of course, Eren won't be undefended, he will have a small squad of elites including Goku and Mikasa protecting him. After the whole desertion commotion is settled, the operation to retake Trist begins, and like usual it doesn't start well as Eren tries to attack Mikasa, then punches himself in the face, knocking himself out. Seeing as Eren is knocked out, some of the elites want to end the operation, but it is decided that they will continue to protect Eren until he wakes up. Meanwhile, Goku started to push the boulder inch by inch, but it isn't getting very far, at the rate he is going at, they will be lucky if the hole is plugged by the end of the week, so Goku gives up instead, relying on his ODM beer to kill as many titans as possible, still being able to move despite his injuries because he always had a high pain tolerance and is determined to continue fighting. Seeing the mission wasn't going as planned, Armin heads over to Eren's location, using his big brain to wake him up, as Eren starts to carry the boulder towards the hole, sealing it, with less casualties due to Goku being there as he didn't need to rely on buildings to use ODM beer to outmaneuver the titans, instead jumping through the sky slicing titans into pieces. After the Battle of Trist, Eren wakes up in a dungeon, being questioned by Owen of his intentions. Eren is then taken into a military tribunal where his fate will be decided, with it ending the same as canon. After a week, all of Goku's injuries had healed giving him a Zenkai boost, increasing his power level to 90, by then it is also time for the cadets to choose which regiment to join, with everyone choosing the same regiments as usual and Goku of course choosing to join the scouts. Dot one month later, the scouts embark on the 57th expedition outside the walls, with Goku in Mikasa's group in the formation, so is MIA for most of the expedition, so it goes completely the same as canon up until, Mikasa and Goku witness Eren get ripped out of the nape by Annie's titan, being stored in her mouth. Seeing this, Mikasa and Goku are stunned for a second, but quickly get ready to attack, with Goku getting a minor rage boost, increasing his speed and strength. Together Goku and Mikasa do a decent job and even overwhelm her, forcing her to be to defend countless attacks, by hardening her skin but Goku was so fast that a lot of the time, she couldn't harden in time, the only reason Goku hadn't won yet was because he had to defend Mikasa when there were finishing openings. After fighting for a bit, Goku prepares to grab Eren, seeing Annie's mouth open, however Annie was planning for it, 
grabbing Goku's tail, squeezing it, remembering how when they used to spar, Goku would always become weak when his tail was pulled. Annie then swings Goku around by his tail, letting go, launching him towards a tree, forcing Mikasa to catch him, giving her enough time to escape. When Goku got up, he was still a little lightheaded, however he could see a spinning blur, cutting through Annie's titan, that being Levi, and a figure, aka Mikasa, retrieving Eren from the mouth, retreating. While on the way back, some stupid scouts went back to retrieve the bodies of their friends, but in doing so, they attract a large crowd of titans towards them, and due to the weight of the bodies, they are too slow, so Levi prepares to sacrifice his squad's bodies to remove the excess weight, but Goku, jumps off, telling them that he'll will catch up soon. A lot of the scouts who didn't know Goku, assume that he was suiciding, however they almost immediately realize the strength of Goku as he grabs a 15 meter titan by the leg, throwing it at the other titans, knocking them over momentarily, however that was enough time for Goku to remove their naps, killing them. Goku then starts to accelerate, catching up to the others, telling them that he is back, and those titans were a lot of fun, smiling. When they arrive back in the walls, Goku sneaks off, managing to enter the MP's food storage, eating a large proportion of it, to regain the energy lost when his tail was squeezed. While waiting for orders, Goku continues his secret training. Okay guys, this is the end of this video if you enjoyed, please don't forget to like and subscribe, also please comment down below a ship for Goku, I was thinking maybe Annie because Saiyans are attracted to strong-willed women, and she is also capable in a fight. The only problem with this ship is that it will make Amin single, but Amin is probably willing to take one for the team so yeah. As always, this is Demonic Saiyan saying bye.